Ah, Meshuga. The unborn child of a distortion pedal and a calculator. Known for their super complex yet groovy style, Meshuga released the album Obzen in 2010. And today, we'll be breaking down the first single from this album. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the winner of 2010's best bedtime song, Bleed. Cracking a Meshuga song has its own set of rules, and knowing the background and musical tendencies and characteristics of the band can go a long way with helping us understand what we're dealing with here. So, first and main riff. Off the bat we hear two very conflicting patterns. The crash cymbal, teamed up with the backbeat on the snare drum, and, well, uh, everything else. Let's listen to the snare drum. Together with the crash cymbal, they create a steady driving pulse that oversees all the madness underneath. Let's look at the second pattern, played by the kick drum, the bass, and the guitars. It's pretty quick, so I'll slow it down first. This short pattern has four notes in it. But those four notes take the span of three beats, as the first two notes are double the speed, therefore equal in length to the other two notes. If you're a drummer and you know your uh, rudiments, it's a herta. Herta. Herta? Herta. Herta? Whatever. So, we have two different rhythmic patterns. Which one is the time signature? A known rhythmic approach and a musical cornerstone for this band is creating the illusion between uneven beats that are played underneath very steady pulses. More often than not, the steady pulse will be played by the crash and the snare drum, while the more edgy, distorted, uneven beats would be played by the kick drum, by the bass guitar, and by the electric guitar. This song is entirely in 4-4, and the proof for that lies in the transition between the sections. It doesn't matter which wacky rhythm is played by the band, when it's time to switch from a verse to a chorus or a bridge, it always happens within the confines of 4-4 bars and moreover, 8 or 16 bars of 4-4. Okay, so subdivision next. If you can't feel the subdivision yet, no worries. The best way to find it would be to slow the pattern down. Like, way down. Then you can count them out. Now, as we mentioned before, the fast two beats in the beginning of the loop are equal in length to any one of the remaining beats. So, for now, let's combine them into one beat. That would help us find the subdivision. This is the original pattern. And now, we'll take the extra beat out and make it easier to count. Boom! We have four subbeats for every main beat, which means we are in 60 notes, and the faster beats will be called 30 second notes. 
So what do we have so far? We know we're in 4-4. We know subdivision is 16 notes and 32nd notes. And we know that the intro riff has groups of three that looks like this. Note, this is not a triplet. I repeat, this is not a triplet. It's a group of three 16 notes, which means it doesn't take the entire span of the quarter note, like a triplet does. Amazing. I'm very happy we talked about the first 49 seconds of the song. We only have six and a half more minutes to go. Hence why this video is called Bleed Part 1. Let's listen to the next pattern. It sounds pretty much like the first one, but a little longer. So let's just slow it down as well. Huh, wait, so it's just the same idea, but instead of three notes, It's five notes? Well, um, yeah. And by keeping the same group aesthetic, but making it a bit longer, they managed to just make it sound like the riff slowed down, which is uh, pretty cool. Okay, for the last section we'll go through in this video, let's skip a bit to this part. Here, we hear the same kind of patterns, but instead of sounding consistent, it changes and almost sounds random. So, we have pattern A, which is groups of three, pattern B, which is groups of five, and let's add another one, pattern C, by adding two more beats to the previous pattern and creating a group of seven. Adding pattern C to our inventory, we have three kinds of groups we can play around with, which is what this section is all about. Even though it sounds pretty random, there's a cool logic behind it. Let's look at it. Instead of playing one pattern over and over again, we combine a few of them in a specific order to create a monster group. Assuming the cycle starts on beat one, this section is organized as such. Pattern C twice, pattern B, pattern A, and pattern B again. Or in numbers, seven, seven, five, three, five which adds up to a mega monster group of 27 beats. That's a big group. This is our monster group played separately, slowly. And up to speed. If we cross it with the crash and the snare, that are still holding down the fort by playing quarter notes and a backbeat. It sounds like this, slowly. And up to speed. <laughs> fancy tricks, huh? So fancy I forgot to add seven to the accents. 
Well, that's all for now, as I'm sure your brain turned into hummus at this point, just like mine did. Stay tuned for Bleed Part 2, and uh, see you next week. Let's go!